Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Natalie. In today's video, I show you how to make this conditional logic calculation order form. This is done using the dynamic content for Elementor plugin and an Elementor Pro form. This form also has an, a PayPal functionality so you can accept right away payments from your customers. I already went ahead and installed these four plugins. Dynamic Content for Elementor. This is a great plugin to complement Elementor. You get over 100 features. You can get it now by a 30 day money back guarantee. I'm not sponsored by them, I'm only providing my honest opinion. It has, among other features, a PayPal widget for Elementor form. You get a new Elementor form field allowing to process a PayPal payment. I will talk about it in a minute. Elementor and free and pro versions and WooCommerce, although we don't need it for this particular video. In this section, you can configure the available features. You can enable or disable all features presented by this plugin. Here is where you manage all the, all the extensively features such as template system, widgets, extensions, page settings and global settings. To use PayPal within the Elementor Pro form, you need a PayPal account to receive the payment, right? So you need to connect the, APA, the API access to the form. To create a new API is quite simple. As a sandbox, you log into your PayPal developer dashboard account and navigate to My Apps and Credentials. In My Apps and Credentials, you can find your existing APIs or create a new one by clicking on Create API. API app button under sandbox and then you specify the app name the country that you want to test it and click on create api button then all you have to do is to input the api credentials and save them within the days this dashboard now you are ready to process any paypal payment inside your website Okay, let's start building a, for, a form from scratch. Move over to the page tabs and click to add a new one. I call it multi-step form. You can name wherever you want, publish and then add it with Elementor. Later, I will insert this title dynamically to my form page. I'm going to obtain the title dynamically with two clicks. I search by title widget. This is a dynamic content widget feature. Center a line with a divider line. Voila, there you have it. For my form, I need a new section. So I click to add a new one. One column is fine. I drag the form widget to my canvas. You get the default elemental fields, name, email, message. This is for my restaurant website, so it works fine for me. I give it a name so things can be easily referenced if I need to. I want to add icons to my fields, so I click on this D letter to access. You must decide whether to add on label, label or input. I decide on input inside the input of the field. I insert the user icon and now I click on the email field. Then click on the D to access the icon library. I want to envelope, insert. This tab condition is from the Dynamic Content plugin. Keep in mind that the conditions will be applied only on the front end. You got three controls, always visible, show if and hide if. The first one is to is enabled by default. All form fields have no conditions for standard behavior. The show if option is to activate the field only if the conditions are satisfied and the hide if 
It deactivates the field if certain conditions are met. Let's add a condition to my email field. This is quite easy. Click on the email field and conditions tab. My condition is I want to hide if the name field is empty. Now, this is an expression to trigger the behavior. I type in name in lower cases. Name is the ID of my name field following by a logic operator. The double equal equals will compare two values. The other one is for string object types. As for my message field, I'm going to add a second condition that is to hide if the previous field is also em empty. So I input two double equal signs and the logic operator. I encourage you to find helpful information and search for equality operators over the internet if you find it difficult. Let me show you what I'm using. If you search for conditional field version 2 over the website, it's shown some examples. It allows you to hide or disable a field based on the content of other fields. As I said, it uses expressions and logical operators. You, e you easily figure by performing the demo examples. Ok, let's go back to WordPress. I had a new item. The type is a select field where I can have multiple choices. The label is choose. I paste, I paste my three options with the pipe character. It lets me hide some relevant information to my users. On the canvas, you can check it. You can check it. My numbers are hidden. Add a new item and number this time. Label is how many. The placeholder is how many as well. I must change the ID for, for my choose previous field. So click on the choose field, advanced tab. I delete the default ID and I type in your name in lower cases. For the how many field advanced tab, I did delete the default ID and I insert my logical field name in lower cases. Perfect. Continuing. I had a new item. This time is a number field to set the quantity of my products. I entered options. The label is options and under the advanced tab I changed the ID to options. It makes sense for me. The next item is the amount field allowing me to perform the math for me. Uh, the label is total. And the ID is total as well in lower in lower cases. Below you can find the short code with the two brackets. I need to insert the math expression to calculate the user inputs. So I enter the expression. I explain in much detail this kind of expression in my previous tutorial. So make sure you check it out later. I also had the text after, so I always get it with the total field amount result. The last item is the PayPal field. The label is PayPal, the placeholder PayPal. You can set up some other relevant information regarding the item name, the item value, the item description and the default approbation message to be sent to your customer when finishing the payment. However, I want to keep my tutorial short, so I leave this for another tutorial. I change the column width to 30%. For the submit button, I change it to place order with a shopping icon. Now we add the multi-step type field to the table. The label is step one, Below enter the text for the previous and next button text and drag it to the top. I want the personal details to be part of this first step. 
duplicate by clicking on the duplicate icon. Change the label and the ID to step 2. Drag below so this section is to be part of the product information. Duplicate this once more and drag it before the PayPal field. Change the label and the ID to step 3. Scroll down and find the step settings. This for option is a dynamic content feature. I set my type to number with a circle shape. I also enable the four options to show up the labels as legends to show all steps. Under the style tab, I tweak some design settings. In the step sections, I added the font to audio wide onto a 1M font size. I'm done. Update and let's check now on the front end. Launching the web page. There you have it, beautiful. Let's simulate adding in some random values. Refresh first. As you are watching, the email field is hidden. It's waiting for any name value. I had random cases now. Excellent, the email field is not hidden anymore. Actually, it's waiting for an email address. For step 2, I want to buy two margarita pieces. It costs $10 each and with an additional fee of $5 for the size. And the step 3 is the PayPal payment operation. Click on the PayPal button. Immediately opens up the usual PayPal environment to complete the purchase. Now you have a clear idea about how to make an Elementor Pro Dynamic Conditional Logic order form in your own website. I'm planning to make many tutorials with Elementor and dynamic content for Elementor. If you like it, make sure to subscribe to this channel, leave a like down below. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!